Mr. Bergeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Hello, uh, and welcome to this episode of Bergeron Briefs. As you know, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, I'm an attorney at uh, Myrick O'Connell. We are, there are 60 of us there. That we do all kinds of things. I do nothing but elder law. And as you know, the purpose of these shows is to go beyond the seminars that I do here um, and to really introduce you to the people that you need to kind of know if, you wanna, if, if you're older. Uh, and you want to know what the services are that are available, what kinds of things are available. So two new people that you want to know because they're moving into town here in <laughs> Ashland uh, are Amy Lucas and Dixie Imon, who have been nice enough to join me. Thank you very much for coming on to the show. Thank you Thank for having you. us. And you are here because you are both working at... The Residence at Valley Farm. The Residence at Valley right Farm. Right on 126. That next, giant building that, that people are trying by. Giant saying, what, community, right? What is that? With right next clock. to the mini golf, right, of course. Next to the mini golf. And actually right down the street from here, from, yes. the, uh, from the cable TV station, yes. right? And, can you, and just tell me about, in general, what is the community? How many units are? When is it going to open? We're Ooh. slated to open in October. Yeah. We have 80 apartments. Uh, 60 of those apartments will be in their rental apartments. Mm -hmm. will Everything be, is a rental unit. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And 60 of those apartments will be in our traditional independent and assisted living section. Mm -hmm. And those are completely integrated and blended arts. So if Amy and I were to move in and we needed assistance down the road, the, the services would come to us. We don't have to physically change apartments, wings, or eat in a different I see. dining room. like a special little neighborhood for this and correct. a little neighborhood for that. Everybody That's is, correct. Everybody is kind of together. Okay. Yes. I and and those, those apartments will consist of studios, one and two bedrooms. I see. And additionally, we'll have 20 memory care uh, apartments what and those are going to be on the first floor those are for folks with dementia and Alzheimer's yep. it is a secure area but it's very much a part of our community mm -hmm. and those are all studios with the exception of two companion suites and is that, and is, will that that separate 20 years will that be all on one floor or they are be, they'll all be on the first floor everybody there is on the first floor yes so before we kind of talk about why in the world someone would want to go to assisted living because some people may be thinking about it but others may be thinking never never <laughs> never I'm leaving my <laughs> can you just tell me a little bit about yourself Amy so what, sure. how did you get here how did you're not I get a, here? You're not an old person, obviously. So. <laughs> well, I, but I have actually been working. You've been old? <laughs> no, no, no. I've been working with independent and assisted living communities for, I started 17 years ago yeah. in independent assisted living. I was in skilled nursing before that. Oh, and you're skilled, you were a nurse. I, yeah. No, no, no oh. I was working in skilled nursing. Oh, in a skilled nursing facility. Mm -hmm. I, I see. And it's funny because I grew up working, or I'm sorry, I grew up in independent and assisted living because my parents were involved in that. So my father was the CEO of a large campus style setting and my mother was an activities director so at so five and six years old I were, was I was with all the seniors and an helping their bingo and yeah. helping with their yeah. you were um, a junior assistant I was a right? junior assistant Un so a very low paid junior assistant <laughs> Great. Right? Great. I got a lot out of it and it's actually yeah. the population that I love working with so it was natural when I went to college and I yeah. studied gerontology and then moved into independent and assisted living. And you must find that, that, right? That there are people who, even from being young, they've just loved working with older folks, right? And, Absolutely. And, and, and I've, I've, I've talked to people about that. You know, you, the thing that makes, well, actually, there's a lot, of, a lot of folks in assisted living. The reason why they're there, that's what they like doing. That's what they like doing. So you find a kind of an upbeat population just for that reason. And I think that you're really able to see that in communities, too. You can see the people that, enjoy working with yes. seniors and that we're all doing yes. this for their benefit and for customer service and we're there for the seniors and we're there for the families and you walk into some other communities and you can kind of see who's there who's doing it for a job and mm -hmm. then you see the people that are doing it because they love it and that they you know we're an extended family which is why wonderful. it's so important that people shop you know because Absolutely. I always tell people when you're thinking about 
assisted living. Assisted living is so much like college, right? It's like you're gonna you're gonna check out. Like you go with your kids to the various schools, right? And you know, and the reason why you go to a lot of schools is there's inevitably going to be one that they're going to say, "Dad, I could really I could really live here," you mm -hmm. know. And it's like the same thing. You have to have that. You have to have that feeling. We had that exact conversation this past week with a new resident who will be moving in. He was there with his daughter, and his yeah. daughter referred to it as college. And we talked about college, and it, it's very similar to that. Everybody, yeah. you know, even for us being new and opening soon, coming right. in at the same time, and because um, you get those same kind of questions about, uh, it's kind of like a dorm. Am I really going to have privacy? But we're going to get back to that. Okay. So Dixie, what are you doing here? What, are you an Ashland person? You I am not an Ashland right. person. I actually live out in Boxborough, next yeah. to Acton, yeah. and um, I was a recruiter for many years, which was uh, dealing with a lot of folks, and that's what I enjoy. Yeah. And yeah. I was, I had the luxury of being home with my kids for many years, my two kids who are 19 and 17 now. Which is now definitely a luxury, right? <laughs> yeah, true. it is, it it's is. True. And sometimes I think, oh, maybe I should have gone back sooner, but Ask you know what, kids. look where I ended up. Ask so, your kids mm -hmm. if yeah, you that's gone true. Back. I always tell that to my, because she, she was one of those. She had, you know, left her high tech job for six months and, and you know, when seven years later she was back, went back to work. <laughs> right. And, so do what, what should I have done that? Right. So like, ask your kids. But the first yeah. time I went back was working in, with seniors oh, I see. in a startup, yeah. and I was on the road introducing um, a concept to um, many communities in the yeah. area. So what I really love to do, I love working with the seniors. Yeah. I love the benefit that that we give to folks. I love seeing people blossom, but I also enjoy all the relationships that I've made from. Uh, working with lots of different people, and you've been doing it now for a while. Three years, you've been yeah. doing it for a while. So now you've so you and so you've both been involved in this for a long time. Mm -hmm. So let's go to kind of the 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 heart of the issue, right? Which is what I'm ha I talk to the conversations always with with, with folks, who especially with folks because I always tell folks, you know, my my classic couple Frank and Mary that you've right. seen in my yes. presentations, and their goal is to die and be buried in the backyard, and that's a wonderful <laughs> goal. But I'll tell people, you know, the, the, the question is, is that where you're going, first of all, is that where you're safe? Because you want to be safe. Because if, you, if something happens where you never want to be, never, never, never want to be, practically never, is in a nursing home, right? So you want to be well enough that you're not going there, right? But the other piece is, do you, are, you, are you happy? You know, beyond being safe, are you really happy? And so can we just kind of talk about, for folks who are constantly facing this, mm -hmm. who why, why could you, in what's, and tell me about some situations in which sure. people really have found themselves being more happy in assisted living than being in their backyard where they're make, you know, still doing their little garden you know, and there's flowers that they've been raising you know, and the kids come over, right? They get the shovel of snow, it's great. Well, our goal is to have people be in their home and be active and vibrant and part of a community. Yeah. And we're very much a social model at the Valley Farm. And so most of the folks that tend to move in Maybe something was missing from their life. Maybe, um, maybe their spouse had passed away, yeah. or many of their neighbors are no longer in their neighborhood, and they're being a lot more isolated. Maybe they've decided it's probably best not to drive in the evening. So, um, what our community offers is yeah. the sociability, a lot of exercise, nutritional meals, um, just a wide variety of resident-driven programming to help people stay not only safe, but vibrant and active and mobile. So it's to some extent replacing some things that might have been lost. Yes. Now, do, do you find when you're talking to folks also though, that when they get there, they're actually finding things that they never even thought they'd Absolutely. Would have, would have I, I could talk about this all day long with the number well, of families and number of seniors who have come to us over the years in, yeah. in different communities and their different living situations. And I would say a, a common theme yeah. is a senior who's been widowed and been living by themselves for five or 10 years, and, and they, they wait for the mail, uh, they wait for the newspaper, they clean up, you know, they have breakfast, and then they make a little something for lunch, and they clean up and they putter around. I don't know how the seniors could be making that much of a mess just by themselves, by themselves but, they, but they, they putter around and clean up and clean. wait for the mail. And, and that they're isolated and they don't even really know that they're isolated because and this the is way, the way. And by the way, there's nothing that comes in the mail anymore. <laughs> right. Right. You know, right. It's, it's, it's a bizarre thing. And they say they have great neighbors, but yeah. the neighborhoods have changed. And their families are also busy and working and, and do stop over and bring meals. Yeah. But they just don't 
they don't realize because this is their new normal and their new routine yeah. how much there is to still be engaged in and, I, and, and engage yeah. with other people. That's an interesting and, point because it's kind of like you, it, you don't notice it, you just kind of slip into this. Right. It's, just, it's a different pattern from where you were. And then I think, yeah. you know, the families will say, well, mom, you know, she wasn't really social. And I say, even if she came down for three meals a day, you'd be seeing more people than you see in your home in, in, in a two month period. By be just having that that right. socialization. Now, are most of the people who are moving into assisted living people f who are from the immediate area, or are they typically moving? I found these kind of two different groups. I always mm -hmm. assumed that assisted living was kind of you're living, you know, that like there's one per community and that's where you go. But I find so many of them, it's really they want to be close to a child, but not really close to a child. You don't want to live not be, living like, with them, you don't but, but close enough. Right, 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 right. right. It, um, it runs the gamut. I would say the majority right now are local, um, mm -hmm. Ashland, Holliston, Framingham, and then some seniors from other towns who are moving to be closer to family that live in Ashland and Holliston. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and if you were talking about a, a percentage, would you say that, would you say most, like over 50% are like from, what you would say are right now? And why you know that is people are already signing up. Right? Absolutely. We have 12 depositors right now who will be moving into the residence at Valley Farm come October or yeah. perhaps September. Yeah. And say, um, of the, and say of those 12. Of the said. 12, 10 of them are yeah. local between Holliston, Ashland, maybe two in uh, Framingham. And then one's down in Sharon, moving closer to his daughter who lives yeah. up here. And one couple's in Florida whose daughter is in Ashland. I get it. So the majority it. are from Ashland, Holliston. And it, so and it Brittany is kind of a range. And once again, when are you hoping to open? We're set to open in October. There are rumors that we may be open a little bit sooner. So we don't know, but early fall that's for very, sure. That's and very exciting. what people are doing now is they're excited about this. So they've made the decision that they want to move. So now's yeah. the time to start thinking about paring down the house, getting a realtor involved to sell your home in the time frame that you'd be moving. Yeah. And they get to pick the best apartments. So right now they're able to pick the largest apartments or the ones with the, a few more windows or of facing course. the south or yeah. facing the east and you know one that's in a quiet, quieter section of the community that has a little sitting room outside so they can really pick and choose kind of where they would want to go. So, so let's kind of talk about that. So the, you know there's, there's that basic question of should I be there or not mm -hmm. and that really relates to has the neighborhood changed? You know do I really want to be doing a little more social things? Is it safe? Now, but once you've decided that you're thinking about this in general, right? So, what's special? What's special here? You know, because because it, it, and people and and of course we've all agreed people should shop. They absolutely, shouldn't just see absolutely. It. They need to understand that there are these different options. You know, but what's given that? What's special about here? One of the wonderful things I think is that we have anytime dining from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I wanted you to bring that up first. I really <laughs> like this. One. It's really great because I mean, this is one's home and. You know, folks, when they transition into a uh, community such as ours, they really don't, people don't like to relinquish power. And it, you're still retaining some of that power if you're able to say, hey, you know, I don't want to have my breakfast from 8 to 9.30. Maybe I want to have it at 10 tomorrow. Because maybe I never did. I yeah, mean, maybe that exactly. Just wasn't my hour, exactly. Right? And, you know, I spoke with a gentleman last week, and his dad, he said, you know, he, he's in a different property right now, but he's yeah. feeling a little bit like he's, quote, back in the military because he's supposed to eat breakfast at this time, lunch at this time, and dinner at the other. And who doesn't wish to have flexibility? And right. I've seen it firsthand, you know, someone has a doctor's appointment, so they go out, they end up missing the dining room. Of course, right. folks, I'm sure, would make a sandwich and such, but isn't it nice to know that you can go into the dining room and still order off the restaurant-style menu right. at any time of day during 7, 7 p.m.? And I, and I guess, my, my, at least in our household, most socializing happened over food. I remember my mother would always try to push us into the living room. Oh, don't you want to go into the nice room? You know? It was like, well, no, we want to stay around the table because mm -hmm. that's where you like chit chat and right. stuff. So I would think for folks who are moving into an environment too, where in the back of their minds are like, oh, I have to meet new people. You know, this is like a really comfortable way to be actually talking to folks, especially if it's because if it's if it's not regimented, that means your crowds are always going to be smaller at different mm -hmm. times of the day. More intimate, right? yeah. So can you talk a little bit more about the food though? So the the menu is this a really extensive menu? Because well, I'm very picky. I will tell you that for food, and I so we love. So want to the, sit at your table. Yes, yeah, I, I love. The, I love the food at yeah. my communities. Yeah. Our culinary department does a fantastic job. Yeah. 
Yeah. So the menu, it, it'll change daily with your main yeah. entree selections. And then there'll be an, al an alternate menu that you could select from at any time of day. But mm -hmm. it'll offer sandwiches and hamburg, hot dog, um, pasta, grilled chicken. There are probably 20 different options yeah. for your that you can always get. Yeah. And then the entree selections. Everything is heart healthy. It's not prepared with um, additional sodium because people are watching that in their diets. Right. Uh, but right, because that's that's really key. For mm -hmm. A lot of people, you know, they're sensitive about those issues, right? And you find that seniors. I mean, there are studies done out there. So seniors that eat together tend to eat more, you know, be better nutrition, and they tend to drink more, so they stay better hydrated. And dehydration is a big issue, which then leads to falls, which then leads to potential broken hips which and hospitalizations and rehabs. Right. So by having a, a good solid nutrition plan and staying hydrated, we're hoping to keep people at their best. And by the way, I'm just. Parenthetically, you mentioned from like from other communities. So, who are the people who are doing this? And, and is and if I were looking at this place and I want and I was saying to myself, well, you know, this looks great, but I don't want to be in a startup here. You know, I want oh, to these people know how to do this. Is there some place that they could go and see and say, so we oh, have, you know, people, this, these people know what they're doing. You know, because we have question. sister properties, and and that's a good yeah. question. I'm glad that you brought that up. Yeah. So LCB Senior Living, we're locally owned and operated. Our home office is in Norwood. Yeah. And this is a group that had started up one of the more successful senior living companies back in the 90s. So mm -hmm. we used to be Newton Senior Living, and uh, now it's LCB Senior Living. So we have about uh, 18 properties, either open or under construction right mm -hmm. now and growing quite a bit more in the next two to three years. So even though it's a startup. And they're all still owned by, this isn't like a franchise, these are all they're owned all by They're all owned the and, and operated. They're, we have two managed properties that are owned mm -hmm. by somebody else, but we do the management for mm -hmm. them. They have an excellent reputation. Their leaders have been in the industry for decades. And so, so if they, I wanted, they, they know what they're doing. They know yes. what they're doing. And so if I wanted to go to the closest one and say, well, you know, I'm looking at Ashland, but I just kind of wanted to see one. And I was saying, oh, I want to see, get, you know, get a feel of how this could work. Where, where would you go? Well, so they would call me first because we'd want to make an appointment. Well, but, of course. but we have yeah, properties sure. in Dedham and Wayland. Oh, it's, and so it's Ips, close. And when Ipswich and Watertown and Reading. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it would be relatively convenient. But they're all a little to... different. You know, each property, each yeah. community has a different feel. Um, and you find that when, you, you know, we'll recommend to the families that they do go shop. And I'll always tell people, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time, there's a community out there for everybody. We want right. to make sure that we can meet your needs and that, and that we're what you're looking for right. as well. Exactly. And you get that. You, you get a certain feeling when you go into different communities. So some of ours, if it's in, say, Watertown and it's yeah. a little bit more urban versus something that's in Wayland and in an old country estate. Yeah. Um, so they're so, all a little different. So tell me then about, so if I'm moving to assisted living, one of the, one of the you know, obviously I'm, or I'm probably going to keep my car because I want to make sure that I'm still mobile. And we I'm, will shovel that off for you in the winter. And that's very nice too. That's very, that's very <laughs> that's really handy. Really nice. That's Especially very this handy. past winter. But yeah. in addition, if I don't feel like going myself, you know, can you kind of tell me what's a, what would be available, what kinds of things I could do there, and also what kinds of things you're anticipating in terms of things that you, that you that the organization would be actually helping people to get to whether sure. it's through your bus or whatever. That, what yeah, so we'll have that? we'll have a van available. Yeah. We'll have scheduled transportation. Yeah. We'll have many different activities, exercise programs. People come to the community as well as some of our staff. Is there like an exercise or a room that can be an exercise room? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we'll also have bistros, a media room, a beauty salon. Uh, we'll have a podiatrist come in. We can have OT, occupational and physical therapists come in as well if need be. Audiologist, full service yeah. dentist, all of those. Because services. you've got enough room for all of those different. Yes. All of those different players. That's yes. pretty terrific. Yeah, it's right? wonderful. So you don't have to get out for all of those medical appointments. We, if right. people are going out, we now, prefer the them way, to go to a show or I do tell something you fun. When we started to shut off your phone, oh my God, I didn't shut off mine. Excuse me. Sorry about that. This happens. This is live TV. <laughs> so fun. I'm really sorry. I know I've done this before. <laughs> so so people can. There are going to be a bunch of things available for people like who, who are just right there, right? But in addition to that, there's a lot of things that they could go out for. So are you anticipating that those would actually be regular, like weekly scheduled things? Every or just day there will be schedules. There'll be monthly calendars, and those things are going to be, that's going to be a full calendar. Yeah. Because you want a lot of activities for folks to choose from. And when I mentioned earlier that it should be resident driven, we want to be offering activities that are interesting, that are going to be of interest to you and whoever else might be living there. Right. Otherwise, why participate? Like, like what's the point? 
That's yeah, right. exactly. That's and right. I think um, that resident engagement is such a huge piece of what we do. My background is in recreational therapy, and I was a, a recreation director in assisted living for four years. So it's something that's near and dear to my heart. And, and watching somebody move in and transition and, and participate in all these wonderful programs and say, I should have done this a year ago. I should yeah. have done it two years ago. I had no idea what I was missing. And I suppose one of the pieces, as you was, Ed mentioned, was just talking about exercise, you know, because once again, if you're just at home, especially if you're single, if you're widow, or you're widow, you know, the ch what are the chances? That you're actually going to get out there and really pretty, do some pretty exercise. slim, slim to none. Yeah, it's like and the eating thing. You know, you're not going to eat a lot because you're not talking to anybody while you're eating. Whereas if you're at the exercise, you know, everybody else is doing it, and, yeah. and we're encouraging. So, it's it's um, you'll see more people participate if you have all the staff walking around saying, "Hey, Mary, are you coming to Tai Chi?" Right. So we'll have a variety of exercise programs as well. Um, we'll have Tai Chi, med meditation, yoga, exercise with weights and bands. But we also have Anytime Fitness, which is right next door. We're looking to partner with them with some of their classes. Oh, that's great. Um, that's the very... Kingsbury Club in Medfield will, is yeah. installing a pool, a brand new pool. And I've already had seniors asking about aquasizing classes. So that's something that we can go. We can take the van and go out for right. aquasizing. So right. I think that it's very important to keep people motivated, keep everybody stimulated, keep you moving. If you don't move it, you lose it. Right. Right, exactly. Those are the kinds of concerns. Mm -hmm. right? So it's this sounds like it just it, it could just be a lot of fun, right? But, but of course, but. at the end of this conversation, everyone's saying so. But don't, aren't these unbelievably expensive? You know, so can we just without can we just talk about that a little bit about kind of the costs that are involved? I mean, I know that from my own perspective, when I'm talking to seniors about this, right, I'll say yes, it is true, right? This is probably going to cost you more than it costs you to be at home, right? So the nest egg that you've been saving to give to your kids, you may have to use some of your own money to take care of yourself while you're alive, and that's the mm -hmm. way it goes. But on the other hand, the cost of living there, most of your other expenses have kind of gone away. Absolutely. Right. So everything's included except for phone and cable when you mm -hmm. move in with your monthly rental fee. So when you start to look at your taxes, your water bill, your heating bill, your snow removal, the um, the yard, meals, the, uh, your meals, it piled, this piles up. Uh, also, you know, for some people, transportation they might hire transportation to take them from point A to point B. Right. Uh, there, uh, there are several others. We have this whole cost comparison, so people can have a worksheet and figure right. out what they're spending at home, uh, utility repairs and replacements, and, and all of that. And so that's all that's included, and it's rental. So when you do start looking at senior living mm -hmm. as an option. There are a few different models. There are some buy-in communities, and you would put a large sum of money into this. So whether it's three hundred, five hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars goes in, and then you still have a monthly fee. Charge, right? Right. So but here, this is just straight it's rent. strictly rental. So that you, and the rest of your money is kind of aside. But I think it's, that's a great idea that you actually go through the numbers with the with the person who's mm -hmm. coming in, so they can kind of just see it. And Once we, again, it's all about shopping. We take a look at what they have coming in for their monthly income right. and for their portfolio, and do they have long-term care insurance, and do they, are they eligible for the veterans' do, aid and attendance do benefit? Do they have long-term care insurance? Could long-term care insurance ever cover any of this? Absolutely, for assisted living. For assisted living. And I have uh, several people right now who are moving in who yeah. have lifetime policies or 20-year policies or 10-year yeah. policies. Yeah. So depending on the policy, and, and back in the day, 30, 40, 50 years ago, when people were purchasing these policies, they're, they don't, these policies don't exist anymore. I was just going to say, I don't so, see those much. No. But these would be older policies. <laughs> exactly. And you mentioned the aid and attendance benefit. And can you want to talk about that a little bit? Or do we want to discuss that? There, well, there are several criteria yeah. to be able to qualify for that. And again, that's something we do on an individual basis, and it involves some financial numbers as well. well and I there, try to emphasize to seniors is don't say no to yourself regarding these programs. You know, they're because, out there because right because if you if you if eat you know if you or your spouse living or dead served during you know active duty during at least one day of wartime right. and wartime is very broadly defined in these programs mm -hmm. especially if you need some assistance if you're going there because you need some uh, physical assistance right these programs can pay up to two thousand dollars a month I, I, I heard a, a, a statistic from a friend of mine who does nothing but work with veterans on qualifying for those programs, mm -hmm. that something like over 60%, nationally, over 60% of everybody living in assisted living right now is on the aid and attendance benefit. Really? Right? That's, that's, that's what's huge. paying the gap. 
Okay. That's what's because you know once again my standard Frank and Mary, maybe they've got income of like three thousand dollars a month. The sister living is going to be more than that. But if you had a benefit on top of that of two thousand dollars a month, now you're getting very close. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the amount of money that you're that you're stressing at because, you know, it's not going to be you're not going to be able to save it for your to give it to your kids, right? That amount starts shrinking down a little bit, which is right. really really important. Well, listen, I really want to thank you both for coming over, thank, right? Thank you. And kind We're of talking about us. what you're doing right down the street from here, right? Uh, and I want, you, I want to urge you, as we were talking today, if you're shopping for assisted living, it is about shopping, right? You're the buyer, they're the sellers. They have to convince you that they have a great thing. That said, if you are living, if you're here in Ashland, this is right down the street, right? And, and it does sound great, and it's being done by some folks who have done this a lot before. So if you're concerned about, is, you know, is this credible, you can just go see one of their other places. So thank you very much for joining us for this episode of uh, Bergeron Briefs. I look forward to see you later in the year. Thank you to Amy Lucas and thank you to Dixie Iman. A real pleasure. Thank you, Art. Thank you, Art. Thank you.